Will this be remembered as the moment the coronavirus crisis delivered a critical blow to our high streets? In the past hour, Arcadia, the retail empire owned by this man, Sir Philip Green, has collapsed. Tonight, 13,000 jobs are at risk across Arcadia's portfolio of stores. They have more than 100 premises here in Scotland alone. These are huge brands. Topshop, the most iconic. A buyer may well be found for that name, but for now it's anyone's guess how many of its shops up and down the country in our town centres and shopping centres will survive. And Arcadia's collapse means even more uncertainty for Debenhams and its 12,000 workers across the UK. The Nine's consumer affairs correspondent Nick Sheridan has the story. May not win. And Nick is here now. Nick, tough times indeed. And first and foremost, we've got to think of those 13,000 or so workers who his future is so uncertain in the run-up to Christmas, in the middle of a pandemic, but all retail, retail businesses are having a tough time and they're, they're struggling through this pandemic. But Arcadia, I mean, they haven't had their problems to seek in the past. No, I, I, absolutely. We'll give Arcadia a moment um, to, uh, you know, administration generally is to either let the business get back on an even mm. keel or for people. Now, as two new mass coronavirus testing programmes were rolled out today, the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, managed expectations by insisting the system wasn't the be-all and end-all. But she did admit the role of testing was becoming increasingly important. It's all aimed at driving rates of COVID-19 down ahead of Christmas. Testing of Scottish university students is beginning before they return home, while mobile units have been set up to test residents in five coronavirus hotspots. Katie Hunter has the story. Well, tomorrow the First Minister will deliver the weekly update of the levels system of restrictions we're all living under. Tonight it's emerged Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire could move up to level three, although politicians there are trying to fight the move. So let's just take a moment to remind you of where we are at. Ten days... Thank you very much indeed. Some good news at last today for Scotland's healthcare workers. The First Minister announced they'll each get a one-off payment of £500, a thank you for the work they did during the pandemic. The announcement came during Nicola Sturgeon's address to the SNP's virtual conference. All full-time NHS and adult social care staff will qualify for the bonus. The First Minister also made this plea to the Prime Minister. The Scottish Government... Imagine that, from the eighth tier playing Tottenham. Wow. That's, that's a game you want fans there for, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Don't talk to me about part-time clubs beating full-time clubs in cup competitions. That <laughs> brings back done memories at the weekend for at <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yes, let's move on very quickly. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> now, have you done your Christmas shopping yet? Uh, we've all heard of the Boxing Day sales. Black Friday is a more recent phenomenon. But did you know today is Cyber Monday? The pandemic has accelerated the move from bricks and mortar to internet shopping. Arcadia, just the latest victim of that night, as, as we heard earlier. And today, apparently, is when many of us buy our Christmas presents online. Stephen Gordon has been looking at the rise and rise of internet retail. Oh, it's people like them that are going to make sure that we all get our presents on time, if we do. Because if you look at all those, all those boxes and all the work they've got to do... Are know. there any shopping days left till Christmas? I don't know. <laughs> people <laughs> better get their November. orders in. Yeah. You've got to get thinking about it. Yeah, indeed. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Let's have a look ahead to... I'll look at some of his other news now, sorry. And Joe Biden has fractured his foot while playing with his pet dog. And we've actually got some more on that story, Martin. A Downing Street spokesman has said it would not set out the difference between a snack and a meal. So what do you reckon? Scotch egg snack or meal? Well, I don't know. Do you enjoy a Scotch egg? I've, I've actually never had a Scotch egg. I genuinely have never had a Scotch egg. <laughs> Oh, no, terrible, terrible wind issues. Oh, <laughs> I would have said it was a snack, but hey, who, who am I to say? Yeah, no, served on a plate. There was something about being served on a plate, and that constitutes a meal. I think George Eustace was kind of uh, bushwhacked into make it, taking a position on that. In yes. an anyway, there we go. The there Scotch egg debate will run and run. Now, if you've been following Strictly Come Dancing, you might have noticed Scottish contestant JJ Chalmers wearing a custom made kilt during his Viennese waltz on Saturday. The outfit, based on a military tartan and sporting a handmade sporin, was.
was put together in just 14 hours. Thank you so much. <laughs> you enjoy a bit of Strictly, don't you? I do. That's the understatement of the century. Yeah, it's interesting to see the story behind this kind of thing. They have yeah. a whim, right? We're going to do this. Millie yeah. two-step. Get a kilt. Yeah. Somebody has to make the thing. I know. Not easy. There Not we easy. go. Nice to see you. <laughs> right. We all know the weather up here can be miserable and it's hard to muster the enthusiasm to go outside for a walk, kilt or not. But <laughs> social media has provided a useful means of getting us up off our sofas and into the great outdoors. Lucy Wallace from Ramblers Scotland has been using the hashtag outdoors every day to challenge herself and others to brave the elements and enjoy the fresh air. <laughs> Do you know what I've noticed in lockdowns this year? Because there's nothing else to do, I've been going out, I live in the countryside, I'm very lucky, I've been going out and walking a lot. And because you have to, you just get, even if it's rainy, you go out because yeah. it's something to do. And I appreciate the countryside, and even in the rain, there's, there, there's stuff that's better in the rain than in the sun, <laughs> believe it or not. Just as well, because there's quite a lot of Well, rain. there we go. <laughs> Seamlessly. You'd think we'd orchestrated that, wouldn't you? Here is Christopher Blanchard. What's the weather going to do, Christopher? Uh, turning oh, cold, actually, unsurprisingly, considering it's December tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, by the end of the week, really quite chilly. Uh, let me take you through the... You uh, well, <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Snow on high ground. I'm not sure I like this. Maybe low levels. OK, well, Thank we'll you see. Very All much, right, Chris. thank you, Christopher. <laughs> Now, just before we go, a lovely story to leave you with. A six-year-old boy who suffers with brittle bone disease was invited on to an Irish TV show to share his passion for outer space. Yes, and Adam King's appearance has catapulted him to internet fame and it even caught the attention of NASA. Let's take a